Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, outer space. Space, space, space. Hope you enjoy. Story number one. Human Writers, written by Alexander. Ruruki de Karastri peered over the shoulder of Jacob Saunders, her tails flicking behind her in a combination of curiosity and confusion. What are you writing? she asked. Looking at the disorganized mess of disconnected tidbits of fictitious information littering his screen. Law stuff, he grunted, not even pausing in his typing. I don't follow, Ruriki said. One ear folded back while she tried to make sense of the short statement. She craned her neck forward slightly, leaning over his shoulder to try and make sense of things. Mind the claws, he said, glancing reproachfully at his shoulder where her hand rested, and she hastily shifted it so that her claws weren't threatening to poke through his sleeve. Basically, how the world all works behind the scenes, stuff like history, details on minor characters, assorted differences in the various societies, that sort of thing. Ruriki considered this for a long moment while Jake kept typing. Is, um, any of this relevant to the story you're writing? She asked, and immediately amended when he chuckled. What I mean is... Are any of your readers going to see this law? Probably not, he said candidly. Then why write it? It makes things easier for me to keep track of, he explained. She looked at him as if he suddenly had grown a tail of his own. Trust me, it'll make the story seem more self-consistent, more believable. Are all Terran writers like this? She asked, straightening and giving him a dubious look. Uh, most of the good ones, at least, he shrugged. The readers can usually tell when the writer is just BSing their way through things instead of thinking things through. So, a lot of the best writers write up a pretty substantial foundation to build their stories on. It's called world building. Yeah, <sighs> Ruriki spat dismissively. Human writers are insane. Marian writers simply tell their stories and are done with it. I know. And it shows, Jake said with a dry smirk. What would a reader care about the uh, world building? She asked feeling her way through the odd word, when the story itself is more important. Jake swiveled his chair to face her, nearly at eye level with the shorter Marian, even by Marian standards, despite being seated. Are you familiar with some of our Terran stories? He asked. The Log of the Federation, Imperial Tales from a Distant Galaxy, The Destruction of the Ring, The Hero and the Three Goddesses, or even some of the more obscure stuff like, um... He paused briefly, snapping his fingers a few times until the name he was looking for came to him. Uh, Jenkins vs. I have heard of them, she said. I have even watched the old video recordings of the logs, a disjointed story, but well enough told to hold interest across its episodes. Jake smirked, broadened into a grin. Grab a chair and come here, he said, switching apps from the document he was working on to an extranet browser. By the time Ruriki had pulled over a chair, he had loaded up no fewer than a dozen browser tabs. He pushed his laptop over in front of where she was seated, beside him at his desk. What is this? she asked, briefly skimming downward through the contents of the tab. This is all the speculation regarding the logs, he said. Each link here, all of them goes to discussions of some aspect of the logs that people are talking about, arguing about, complaining don't make sense, trying to find ways that they do make sense. All of them? She interrupted in disbelief, then switched tabs when he cheerfully nodded. And uh, this? Same thing, but for the Imperial Tales, he said, and she again scrolled down. The links lead to a discussion that lasted for over 700 pages, she exclaimed. Then check the date of the most recent post, and it's still ongoing. Is that the one about the wool of the galaxy? That's a fun one, he chuckled ruefully. I weighed in on that one a few times early on and pretty much got steamrolled. Page 203, I think, he said, when she clicked the link. She went to page indicated, and sure enough, halfway down was his familiar extranet tag of J.S. de Bird, with the posts of impressive length and a detailed list of bullet points. A quick skim of the following post seemed to thoroughly debunk most of those. She looked at him incredulously. What is the point of all of this? She asked in bewilderment, and he laughed. Humans hate plot holes, he said. If something doesn't make sense, we either try find ways to make it make sense, or sometimes just to mock it. 
different people tend to come up with different theories. And when those theories clash, well, that happens, he said, pointing at the screen. And this is because the writers didn't write a world building, she asked. Jake laughed hard enough that Ruriki would have taken offense, if not for the fact that he was a longtime friend. She almost took offense anyway. It took a conscious effort on her part for her fur not to bristle. No, <laughs> uh, the, the world building for the logs of Imperial Tales is um, extensive. It doesn't really do it justice, honestly, he said. A lot of that world building has even been published. Part of the problem is that neither the logs nor the tales had only one writer. So discrepancies crept in here and there, and are no small part of why there are so many arguments about how things work, or are supposed to. Those tiny details are, well, feel free to read through all of these at some point. You'll get the idea, he said with a grin, pulling his laptop back over and switching back to the document app. No wonder Terran writers are insane. Your fan bases are even worse. End of story. Story number two. The problem with that expansionist race. Written by Random3x. I will begin with a clarification. I am writing this account countless millennia after the fact, so details will be spotty at best and inaccurate at worst. But I will strive nonetheless to portray the most accurate version of the events as follows from the records and survivors. But where to begin, though? The beginning seems like a good place, but not of the events yet to be recounted, but of what began everything. Many religious texts of the countless lives that have and will that yet exist often use the phrase, in the beginning. It is here I shall start to give context to the calamities that were yet to follow. In the beginning, there were only the gods, primordial beings without form. It was these great beings that the one above all gave the right of creation to. Each made a galaxy of their very own, it is over the eons they shaped the stars and planets. When they finally finished their work, they looked upon it and knew that it was good. Then the one above all told them that they could each pick one will to seed with life of their very own design. For these galaxies they had made shall be the sole domain of their creation. All shall be well, all shall be good. So the gods did just that. One world with life for each galaxy. They all knew no life would ever have needs beyond what their galaxy could provide. Hindsight, as many species has often pointed out, is 2020. Looking back now, it seems foolish to absurd degree to be that optimistic. To put it lightly, the few too many of the gods were imbeciles. However, the greatest of these is the creator of the spiral galaxy I am discussing. They made many life forms, far more than was common amongst their kin. Their most significant, and many would say worst creation, was one they settled on before abandoning their creation entirely. The species, that would be the focus of my studies. They spread like a plague across their galaxy at the very moment they obtained FTL capabilities. This, in and of itself, was not unheard of. Many creations longed to spread then seize the domain their god had made for them, but so few did it so aggressively and without mercy. In my observations, I have yet to find an account of a species so singularly focused on stepping on its own to go further. But that is neither here nor there. The issues began when they declared themselves an empire. This again... It was not unheard of, but their behavior thus far had made many races and gods nervous. It was when they preached another galaxy that eyebrows and equivalents began to be raised and stated many times before. This also was not unheard of phenomenon. Many races had a hunger for exploration, to see beyond the horizon, but they were different. Where other races would at most visit, they settled. Soon they became the first race to truly hold domain over more than their allotted galaxy. This concerned many significantly, and they were told the truth. 
at the galaxy, they had, as all their god had given them. They believed this race was merely ignorant of the fact, due to their god abandoning them. Oh, how unwise those beings were. Even a cursory look at their history would show their religion is not a thing that should be prodded lightly. A crusade is what they called it. Cleanse the heretic galaxy of evils. So many souls entered the other realm during this era of conflict. Many more races began to panic. That is, till they saw who the next race they would encounter would be. I am sure that this is 90% propaganda spread, but it seems my species were the perfect counter to these invaders made by an idiot god. When they hungered for expansion, my race could meet them and then some. Where they could scream about their faith, my race had done so countless times to a million gods whose existence we could never confirm. Where other races faltered in fear, we stood strong, because while humanity may fall victim to tyranny, we will never allow it to persist. All accounts speak of a war in hushed whispers and terror. The Great Void, as it was now known, is where the galaxy we fought in used to stand. But we still fought on, and we succeeded. We pushed them back one star system at a time across countless generations. Did we do it because it was right? Personally, I think no. I think we would have just been like them had we not encountered our ugly future from the outside. It is entirely the reason I spoke so vaguely in my earlier parts. Any human could assume that this was about us. So why do we fight so hard then? I am reminded of an ancient earth warrior's mantra when I think of this question. The true soldier fights not because he hates what is in front of him, but because he loves what is behind him. Excerpt by Lucas Vecht, History Lecturer at the Mars University, Year 3894, Human Calendar. End of story. I would just quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and patrons. Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Lord Azrakul, and Arcadian. 